Recently, I've gotten a lot of comments asking about problems related to getting triggers to work, so I decided to make a dedicated video on it. In this video, I'm going to show you all the basics of triggers and tips on avoiding any pitfalls that you might come across. Let's begin. So I really quickly set up this simple scene for this tutorial. We just have this moving cube, and what if we want something to happen if the cube moves through this gate into the pink zone? Well, this is where we would use a trigger. When we look in the scene view, you can see that this scene is just comprised of a couple of cubes. What we are going to do now is we need to create a box, a trigger zone, for the player to enter for something to happen, and this will take place in the opening of this gate. I'm going to hit the plus button right here, and then select 3D object, and then select cube. And this will be the zone in which our trigger will be. So position it wherever you want, and then scale it to match whatever opening you want to have. I'm just going to match it to the opening of the gate. And now, as you can see, we have this cube. And if you look in the inspector, you can see that it has a box collider. And we have the is trigger component right here. I'm going to hit check to make it a trigger. So that means that when we hit play, the cube will just pass straight through this area and nothing will happen. So what we need to do now is we need to make it so that the trigger detects if the player is going into it and what will happen when the player does. Now what are some rules for the trigger? First off, either the trigger or the thing entering the trigger has to have a rigid body attached to it. Let's check both of them and see if there is a rigid body. I'm going to select the cube. There is no rigid body. Let's check the player. Is there a rigid body? Nope, there is no rigid body. We are going to add the rigid body to the player. So in the player's inspector, I'm going to click on add component and then type in rigid and then hit enter for rigid body. We are going to disable use gravity. This is just for my player, but you can adjust these settings for whatever player you want. And just for this case, I'm going to make the mass zero and the angular drag zero. Because the rigid body does not control the movement of the character, we just need the rigid body so that the trigger detects it. What we are going to do now is we are going to select our trigger cube and we are going to create a new script. And this script will enable us to do something when the player enters the trigger. I'm going to click on add component and then let's say let's type in enter trigger and then if you hit enter and it doesn't recognize it as a component it will make a new script let's hit enter and it will compile a little bit and now let's edit the script by right clicking and then clicking on open C sharp project once Visual Studio is open we can then minimize this and then double click on enter trigger so that it actually opens up the script once the script is open, we can then start coding. We do not need the update methods, nor do we need the start methods. We are going to delete those. And we need to figure out what happens when the player enters the trigger. But first off, what do we even start writing? There are three methods that you can write to detect something entering a trigger. You could say on trigger enter. So this will be typed out as private void on trigger enter and then in the arguments it'll say collider other. This is the first one. The second one is on trigger stay. The last one is on trigger exit. So what do these three methods mean? On trigger enter is run the first frame that something enters the trigger. So this will only be run once when something enters it. Whereas on trigger stay will run every single frame that it detects something is in the trigger. On trigger exit will run as soon as something leaves the trigger. For this case, let's just have on trigger enter. I'm going to delete these methods and I'm going to work with on trigger enter. Now remember, this is run once when something enters the trigger. However, look at what we have here. It essentially takes in collider other. This means that any collider that enters the trigger will run this method. We only want it to affect the player. And how are we going to do this? We are going to do this by putting a tag on the player and detecting for that certain tag. So for instance, if I were to minimize this, let's go into our player here. It's just called cube. Notice how in the inspector on the right, see how the tag is untagged? 
If I were to click on this, we have a couple of sample tags that we can use. Fortunately, player is already selected for us. Not selected, but it is already available as a tag. So we are going to select player. So now our player cube has the tag for player. So when we go back into our script, we can now detect for that tag. So if we were to say if other.compare tag player. Now player has to be case sensitive. It has to spell the same exact string as the string on the tag. So you have to be sure that the P is capitalized in this case. If other.compare tag player. We can now do anything we want. So in this case, I'm just going to print out something. So we will say print and say it works. Whenever the player now enters the trigger, it will print it works to the console. Let's see if this works. If I were to move this player through the gateway, look down on the bottom left hand corner of the screen. Notice how it prints it works. Okay, so it only printed it once but it also printed it again when I went back through the trigger. And now it'll print it a third time, and a fourth time, and a fifth time. And to demonstrate this, we can click on it and see that it printed it exactly five times. Okay, so it only prints it when it goes into the trigger. Now this only works because the player has a rigid body right here, and it has a collider. It has to have these two things for the trigger to pick it up. Now, what happens if we wanted something to run whenever the player is inside the trigger and have it run every single frame? That is where on trigger stay comes into play. If we were to get rid of the word enter here and replace it with stay, now whenever the player, whatever is tagged as player, whenever the player is inside the trigger, it will print something. And I'm going to demonstrate this by saying plus random.range, let's say 0 through 5. So this is going to print a random number between 0 and 5, in addition to the it works string, just to show you that this actually works. You don't have to type this out, but this is just me showing you that it works. I'm going to now hit play. And once again, look at the bottom left hand corner of the screen at the console. When I go into it, Notice how it keeps switching from number to number? That's because it is printing something out every single frame because the player is inside the trigger. So now when the player leaves the trigger, it will now stop printing. We only have 661. If I were to go into it again, that number will just keep going up. So that's what on trigger stay does, okay? Now let's go on to the third method, which is on trigger exit. So if I were to get rid of the word stay here and type in the word exit, now this method will only run if the player was inside of the trigger and then it leaves. So if I were to save this script and then hit play, notice that when the player enters the trigger, nothing happens initially. But if I were to leave the trigger, it now printed out it works once. And that's because the player exited the trigger. Okay? So that is how on trigger exit works. Now, of course, we don't want this white cube here. So I'm going to click on it. And then in the inspector, I'm going to get rid of the mesh render component by just hitting uncheck. And now it is completely invisible. And now you could do whatever you want. This is the basics of using triggers, and I hope that this solved any problems that you had with it. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.